Welcome to this month's GPS training podcast. It's actually our second GPS training podcast this is month. It's our 34th episode. With the current lockdown in the UK, we are now creating two podcasts per month rather than usual one. So hopefully this will keep you entertained as you're locked down. This month we have myself, John, and of course, Ian is joining me. Welcome, Ian, to this month's GPS training podcast. Good morning, John. How are things with you, Ian? Fine. Absolutely fine. <laughs> You've had an exciting uh, month then, have you? Um, it's been a different month, shall we say, because um, we managed, because I, I suppose it was just either just before or just after the last podcast we recorded, so we managed to squeeze that South Downs course in, but obviously nothing's happened since uh-huh. then. Um, and yes, my garden's looking very well manicured at the moment. Um, cars are nice and shiny and clean and haven't got dirty again. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's a different way of life, isn't it? That we all need to adapt to. It certainly is. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on with today's podcast. In this month's podcast, we're going to look at the following. We're going to look at geocaching. What is it all about? And if we can participate in this with the current lockdown, we're going to look at geocaching. It's incorporated into your hour of exercise that we're allowed to do each day. We're also going to have a quick look at the best outdoor GPS units for the summer of 2020 and then we have Ian's FAQs, the frequently asked questions Ian has answered while supporting our customers on um, over the email and, and telephone over the past month. So the first thing is a chat about geocaching. Geocaching in, this is actually your idea of a great story, is, is potentially how we can geocache from our home um, and um, with the current lockdown, we can incorporate it into our one hour of exercise a day. So first of all, Ian, what is geocaching um, as an entirety? In the sim- most simplistic terms, John, and I know that I will be shot by every geocacher <laughs> in the country, probably the world. I, um, I just explain it to people. It's modern day treasure hunting. I, I, I can't describe it in any other different way. Um, I mean, there is, I know we're going to discuss about the different sorts of geocaching, uh, geocaches that there are out there. Uh, but even so, um, it is going off with you, using a GPS to find something that's been hidden. Yeah. And that, to me, the only way to describe it is modern day treasure hunting. And the key thing is, is these, these, these treasures or these caches as they are, they're mm. phenomenal. They're everywhere, aren't they? You know, oh, um, uh, and it all comes yeah. from a website called geocaching.com. Yeah. Geocaching.com, there was something called Open Cache, which is what um, Garmin tried to steal yes, this show they, a few years ago. They did, um, didn't they? Because yeah. they fell out with geocaching.com. <laughs> um, but then, then they realised they couldn't compete with them, so they came yeah. back into line. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of the modern GPS units are actually tied directly into geocaching.com and yes. use live yeah. geocaching. Um, yeah. But they're everywhere in these caches are just phenomenal, isn't it? Really? Well, and this is this really, John, was sort of like where I came up with this idea of this story for us to talk about uh, on this podcast because you know, I think that, um, well, we all know our local area, I think, very well, and it just it will give, give people something else to do within the permitted area that we're allowed to be in for our, our, our daily exercise. Um, mm-hmm. You don't have to get in the car to do this. You can, th- th- as you say, they are everywhere. Yeah. And as I said, it's all done through geocache.com. Geocache.com, there's two memberships. There's your free memberships. If you want to give it a go, um, there's nothing um, nothing lost. No, no. Go to a free membership at geocaching.com and um, you can you can print off uh, the details. Um, or you can have a premium membership, which offers digital downloads of caches directly to your GPS. Um, this is referred to as paperless geocaching. Um, so it's, it's, I say it's a two-person game. Somebody hides something, um, which is a cache, and then somebody else uh, finds it. Um, as you said, there's lots of different caches, isn't there, Ian? Um, traditional yeah. caches, yeah. big big things, all, all sorts of things. I don't know how much of caching you've done in the past. I, um, I think I can say that I've done... So I haven't done... A, if, you, if anyone wants to look at my account, um, I haven't done too many. Um, <laughs> but I've done... An, you know, I mean, we've done quite, quite a few, and I've got a bit later on when we talk about a particular sort of geocache... I've got a great story for you, John, that I even did a bit of homework for, for yesterday. And it is a good story, this. Um, but anyway, that's for a few minutes late. Um, but yeah, so there's the, the traditional cache that I've done. Um, the, the ones I quite enjoyed 
doing that I've done quite a few of are the multi caches where yeah. you because I think the, the multi cache is that you go you get the first set of uh, coordinates to walk to um, and the coordinates on the website are either as latitude longitude but for quite some time now in this country uh, they also give the British grid reference right. uh, for the for, for the cache and what I like about the multi cache is that you end up basically doing going for a walk because uh, mm -hmm. you go to the first cache and it gives you, you you find it gives you a new set of, uh, a new grid reference go off to that one and it's slowly you, you end up going for a really nice walk yeah. in your local area if mm -hmm. there is a multi cache um, so yes and there are virtual uh, caches and oh all, yeah yeah so it is um there are different sort, all different sorts of, of caches that you can do, and they show on the website what type of cache it is as well, which is mm -hmm. so you know what you're going to be involved with do, doing. Traditionally, it's like a, a Tupperware container that yeah. you, you put something in, take something out. But actually, if, if you're, you know, you see often the old 35 millimeter rolls, don't you? Yeah, um, I've yeah, got that's little paper it, yeah. caches rolled in. Yeah, and yeah. Magnetic ones that sit under benches in yeah. parks. And again, even just going to geocache.com, putting your postcode in and seeing the caches around you. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're yeah. in a rural village in Northumberland and, and literally within um, five minutes walk in each direction, I, I know I can do five caches. And that yeah. is no exaggeration. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, phenomenal really. same same for us i mean we're sort of like on the edge of uh haywards heath where i live and you know so it's still you know just houses basically but there are caches um literally both ends of our road that we live in mm -hmm. it's quite quite extraordinary really <laughs> so if we've got a gps there's no reason why you can't just sign up for a free uh, account down well look at those caches near you put in the grid reference or the latin long whichever one you want to do and then go and find it and it's as straightforward as then you log it on the website that you found it and then um you start building up your your cache count as such and i know we go to some of the big geocaching events you now we go to mega and pirate mania and mm. things in the summer mm. and these people are phenomenally fanatic about it it's, it's unbelievable isn't it oh I, yeah and i i mean i've and i'm sure you have on your courses um had people geocaches to come on our courses they said well, I, you, you can always tell um with the greatest respect to geocaches you can always tell who they are because they come in settle themselves in say hello to you and then they're off trying to find the local caches to the right, yeah. to where the, the the course is being held i think it's great because you, you know it, it it is it has such a big following in the country but i think apart from having a really big following especially at this time people who are and i have noticed a sort of like a bit of an uh an an upturn in the numbers of questions that i've been getting through the technical support people getting their gps is probably out for the first time for quite a few months dusting them off uh, you know when they're all updated and all this stuff. it they are actually these local these geocaches are a good way to just go out and prove to yourself that you can either remember how to use a gps or you know, for people who, for someone who's just bought a GPS because they can't go for a long walk, because they can't get in their car quite rightly to go somewhere for a walk, it's an ideal way to start to get to learn how to use a GPS yeah. and and, and um, sort of prove that it works and does what you know, we, we say it does. Yeah, because what you're doing is like intensive training, really, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. it's kind of creating a waypoint, navigate to that waypoint, create a waypoint, yeah. navigate. And that is, yeah. that is all it is. We're just navigating yeah. to a waypoint, but it just happens to be a cache. And there's something at the end of it that you hopefully yeah. can find and log and come back to. A lot of the modern GPS units, like the um, Oregon 700, 750, 750T, and now the 66S, 66ST, and the 66I, um, actually, when you log into the profile for geocaching, it actually gets you to automatically log onto the website and link the two devices up, doesn't it? When you've got yeah. a pair with your mobile phone, that is. Yeah. And therefore, you do live geocaching. So if you've got one of these units, go into your geocaching profile and it gives you a little URL. You go in there, register on geocaching.com, and it pairs the two accounts up, mm. doesn't it? It's phenomenal, yeah. really. Oh, and then you can just yeah. say, download the caches near where I am, and, and it goes online, are. downloads yeah. them onto your unit, and then you can just go off and find them and you don't mm. need to plug it into a computer like you had to traditionally with the old yeah. uh, yeah, as I say, because the the old system was very much used to have to go with a list of caches uh, and grid references with you all or ha have stored them all in your gps beforehand but now you can do it as you say live off the new you, mm -hmm. you know the and, and it's really good um 
But yeah, my story, John. How yeah, about I'm just going to say, I'm waiting for this story. Oh, you're yeah, talking about your story. I'm gonna, <laughs> we, I just want to hear your story. It's uh, far better, far more right. exciting. The one, so the one thing we haven't, uh, in amongst all the caches, one thing we, one we haven't talked about are trackables. Right. Um, and these are little, and these are little um, sort of like, um, they're toys, they're whatever, they've all got their unique code. And um, so when I knew that we were going to be storing, uh, and, and they're hidden in the Tupperware boxes, and, mm -hmm. and the idea is is that someone, uh, you know, you, you buy the trackables from the website, um, and, you, and, and, and you launch the trackable in a box, yeah. um, and you can follow its progress uh, around, well, literally, as in my case, Europe. Um, so, um, so yeah, and 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 it's all um, you can see where this uh, all this little toy has ended up. So, um, well, so when we knew we were going to do this story um, back in two thousand and seven, um, I picked up a little trackable bear right. uh, from a geocache on the South Downs. Okay. And we knew that we were going within, it was within a week or two of going to see friends of ours who lived south of Frankfurt. Okay. In Germany. So the trackable sat in the boot of the car and we went for, over the course of a couple of days, afternoons uh, with our friends and then their young daughters, we did this most beautiful multi-cache through a local forest where they live in the vineyards mm -hmm. and it really was a you know two stunning afternoons of walking and when we got to the the end of the geocache so to speak we finally got to the 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 tupperware box literally in the middle of a very dense clump of trees um i left the trackable in there mm -hmm. so i thought yesterday i thought i wonder if this trackable is still out and about yeah, yeah. and it is Right, and it was launched. So it was launched in South Wales in uh, uh, July two thousand and five. Okay, and it is currently stuck um, around the uh, the Arnhem area of Holland. Okay, um, and it's travelled since two thousand and five um, five thousand three hundred and eighteen miles. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> and I and I found because I, I there there are about I think f seven trackables that all had the same name, and so it did take a bit of time <laughs> to find the one, but I found it, I found it, and I found the log of where I dropped it back in two thousand and seven, um, and uh, yeah, so I we dropped it in. It was very early August two thousand and seven in these woods in mm -hmm. the re re this really thick part of the forest and um and yeah so it's so it's it, it's sort of like made its way out from uh south of frankfurt out into sort of like central germany right uh, and then it made its it's made its way all the way back across germany into holland and it's sort of like seems as if it's got a bit <laughs> it's a bit stuck and it's been going round and round in circles <laughs> for quite some time now but the geocaching.com um website for this trackable it's actually got a map so right. it actually shows the map Resonant. of where the trackable has been since it was since it was launched. what's the trackable call any and do we know what the trackable is um, called it's, or? it's it's called sea bear sea bear uh, like a yes. letter c is it the, uh, no as in sea um bear. i think it became i think it became a a a bit of a um uh, it's a bit landlocked because I, I think the idea was that it, the idea was to try and keep it along the, like near to the sea. You took it so, inside a forest. But, though, but, I, <laughs> but, but I didn't realise, I didn't realise at the time that that's what it was. But it's only, well, you, you know, it's, it's back, it's getting back, it's back in Holland, you know, getting nearer to the sea again. But having said that, it ended up even further into Germany before. <laughs> So if there's any um, listeners to the podcast who live in Holland, they need to go and hunt out a sea bear and bring it nearer the sea. I'll bring him nearer the sea. Right. And, I've um, even got its trackable code as well that people can, can trackable look. code would be fantastic. Right. Even. So we can even put this in the notes of the uh, podcast, podcast and then our yeah. listeners can hunt sea bear out and move him or her on yes. back to yes. the sea. Back to the sea. He or she yeah. belongs. <laughs> Oh yeah, but I think it's great. It's really great. It's a good little story. I thought because 
when I was struggling to find it to begin with, because there was about seven, I thought, oh, I recognise the little photograph because like someone had taken a photograph of the trackable, and it is like a little, it's like a little teddy bear. <laughs> Five thousand three hundred eighteen miles, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No answer to that really is yeah, there? I'm gonna put this into context isn't it do you know we're in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> it's now I must say to our listeners it's actually 8 20 in the morning because we're recording this before we open our telephone lines at nine o'clock and we're talking about sea bear a trackable bear <laughs> that's traveled around the world over 5,000 miles and um yeah the world Ian it's yeah. a strange <laughs> it's only jump because I had time yesterday afternoon to actually because I think normally I said yeah we did a trackable back in 2007 dropped it in Germany I've got and you just said oh do you know what happened and I said no I had all <laughs> had all afternoon to find it <laughs> so what's the track do we have the trackable code then yeah, this is the key it, thing what's the trackable yeah. code for so you? it's uh tbk tbk 5y1 5y1 tbk yeah. 5Y1. I know we yeah. have some geocaches. Listen, any yeah. geocaches in Holland, hunt yeah. out sea bear TBK 5Y1. <laughs> Get it back and, to the coast. <laughs> and take the sea bear a little bit nearer the coast. <laughs> and the world would be a better place. For yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we can continue any more about our chat about <laughs> the uh, geocaching. I think that is kind of hit it Ian. i think that's yeah. perfect isn't it really yeah i think that's no, it. I say it is it is and and i think the other thing is is that again um you know and i've had this commented a lot on by a lot of people who come on our our courses um it is a good way to get uh children out um you know it's it you know for a walk they've got a bit of technology in their hands and mm -hmm. and and it, you know I, I i think genuinely it is I mean, as I say, my geocaching dot uh, com finds aren't many, but you know, I've just, I've done a few mm -hmm. since two thousand. I think I my count about two thousand, well, two thousand six. I would have opened it uh, when I first got my first GPS. But um, yeah, it, it's it. My views are it has its place and a big place for a lot of people, and I think it's I think it is great. Joking apart, it is great. It's a good way to get out, especially at this time, to do a bit of a walk and. Um, and to and you know anyone who has bought a new GPS or that haven't had it out the drawers for some time, uh, had it in a drawer for some time, and just got got it out. It's a good way to go out and practice using it is. GPS. And as you say, you can do it from your doorstep. And again, you don't need yeah. to get your car to do it. You can do it from our store. So be part of our one-hour exercise a day, and it gets you to keeps keeps you up to date of using your GPS yeah. unit. So when the yeah. whole things are lifted, restrictions are lifted, we can get out and do our bigger walk. And you will be a better skilled person with your GPS yes. unit after you've done some geocaching. And you get a bit of fun as well. well absolutely, and yeah. if you've got kids yeah. in the house or your, your wife is a bit reluctant to get out, you know, it's, it's a great yeah. fun thing it to is. do. It as is. a family, I um, meet a lot of families who do it. So it's a, it's a great thing there. So, yeah, it's a really good thing. And again, I just mentioned earlier on, you know, some of the newer units, Oregon 700 range and 66 and 66i range do live geocaching as well. Yeah. So really nice, easy way to do it. You don't need to keep plugging it into your, um, into your computer to do it. So, yeah. Ian, thank you very much for um, entertaining right, us. And, uh, so you didn't even know that was coming, did you? I didn't know that was coming. And uh, <laughs> let us know a little bit more about geocaching. <clears throat> if you'd like to find out more about GPS units that are most suitable for geocaching, please do get in touch with ourselves here at GPS Training. On our website, we actually have a GPS, um, a GPS review of the best units for geocaching, and that's in the review section of gpstraining.co.uk. The next thing we're going to look at this month's GPS training podcast is the best outdoor GPS unit for summer 2020. Over the last couple of weeks, I've just updated the best videos or the best GPS videos ahead of summer 2020. Have you looked at these, Ian, or not? Uh, to be honest with you, John, no, I haven't. At the moment. <laughs> we're going well, are we? <laughs> I'll tell you what I've started doing is because we get a lot of people every year on a daily basis, you know, filling in our recommend, GPS recommendation form. I kind of thought, Start this year, it'd be really nice to visually show people what the units look like and compare them next to each other. So I started this back in January. I did like first quarter 2020 and then the start of April, I've done the uh, second quarter 2020. And I've done three videos, which are the best budget GPS unit, the best top end GPS unit. And then finally, I've done the best large screen uh, GPS unit. And what I do, I literally get the 
the peep the contenders there out on the table and I video myself going through the various benefits and downsides of each of those GPS units. And you can actually see it in my hand. I show you the different mapping options that are available. And, that, and, and it has varied. You know, there's um, some units that have come in um, or, or uh, uh, the, the budget end have changed from the first quarter to the second quarter. I've incorporated some, uh, some units that we've got um, a number of end of line of and really very competitively priced. So I brought those into that because I think they are there to be um, snapped up. Again, we've had, you know, people think with what everything that's going on, actually, our GPS sales have held up phenomenally well. I've had a lot of people even trading in their GPS units because we offer that package of we're not just selling a box with a GPS unit in and I need to go out walking because we offer that training package, our online resource, our online training package. And a lot of people have been buying units and saying, well, I can sit inside. I can learn how to use Garmin Basecamp yeah. with the online training. And also I, I can do a short walk. There's no reason why you can't plan your short walk and, and on, on Garmin Basecamp or on, on Expedition, we're getting the sat map and go for our one hour walk from our house yeah. using yeah. it, come back, plug it back into your computer, yeah. analyze what you do. We've all got the time to do that at the moment. Yes. Yeah. So I've had a really good strong sales. It, it's funny because when the pandemic first hit, we sold a lot more cheaper units but over the last week, 10 days. We've gone back to our traditional sales mm. of, mm. right, I'm a, I'm a walker. I've, I'm, we're in lockdown. I've yeah. been wanting to upgrade my Oregon 600 or my yeah, 64S yeah. or something. Yeah, Can you yeah. give me a trading value? And now we're yeah. buying a 66 yeah. or Oregon 750 yeah. or a SatMap at tip yeah. 20. And these people are wanting to get to grips with it. And you've seen that, I think, on your support questions because it's less technical questions, more on training questions, isn't it? Ian? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's the... I think it's just people becoming f either re-familiarising themselves with their... GPS um, or you know it's not so much I've got a problem with this I've got a problem with that it's it it's more just more of what's the best way to use it and and mm -hmm. you know the and and I think you know the the other thing to mention John is is that you know we um, was we can obviously do so much I can do so much over the um, you know the support I do really the the place to go is our online resource isn't yes. it that's the that's the place with all the little videos and um, showing people just how, if they're a bit stuck as to how to, they can't remember how to do something, just go to the online resource. It's phenomenal that as well, yeah. Ian, because again, the newer units, something like a success has over 50 videos in the online resource teaching yeah. you how to do yeah. everything, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And then the base camp videos are, I always took because the base camp videos are the way we teach them on the courses, the way we do them as webinars, because we say the same thing the same mm. time, mm. week after mm. week. It's the same procedure. This is how you set up Garmin Base Camp. This is how you um, play a direct route. This is how you set a cycling route, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And it's mm. a way we, we teach ourselves on the course, or we teach our customers on the course, and it's all there in that online resource. And yeah. when people have got the time, as they have now, they're buying that new GPS unit and working through that online resource yep. step by step. And it, each video weighs 10, 15 minutes in length, not just two minutes, do this, this, yeah. this. It's yeah. actually yeah. It's a nice steady pace, and then you can follow us at the same time, yeah. isn't it? Well, now, as I say, it is it, it is just a great time if you're thinking about, and, and I think that's it. You know, we all do lead very busy lives, and uh, you know, for very good reason, were our lives have changed, and people are finding more time, um, and this is the time. You know, probably that you see. I think you know, is it because people think, oh. Uh, well, I'd really like to get to grips with my GPS, or I'd like to buy one, but oh, I haven't got the time because I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and then it go, it gets put down the priority list. And yeah, I understand that, but now, um, you know, sort of like that's the priorities have changed. The, the the list has got shorter, I think, hasn't it? It's, it has. And um, and so yeah, it's a good time. It's a good yeah. time. And I say a lot of people are. So if you are wanting, just um, just send us an email. We can do trade-ins of your existing <coughs> GPS units and upgrade to a, a new model. And again, I keep talking about this online resource. It's normally fifty pounds a year, but you get that free if you buy that GPS unit from us. You will also get you no know, paper guides, a quick start guide of how to use a unit, quick start guide of how to use a route planning software, and then you also get email of support and telephone support for the first year. So um, yeah, luckily you'll be liaising with Ian rather than myself. Um, because he knows a lot more than what I do. <laughs> so um, that's what we'll. That's what we do. We can have a, if you send an email in. We'll sign that to yeah. Ian, and then he will hopefully. And again, as you rightly say, you're sometimes even ringing customers up and logging onto the computer and showing them what they need to be doing to get to grips with the unit. Mm -hmm. And if you are indoors at this moment in time, 
um, it's a great time to do it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. if you want to watch these videos I'm talking about, which is the best GPS unit for the summer 2020, just go to our website, gpstraining.co.uk, click on reviews and the second story down, you'll see the best handheld outdoor GPS unit of summer 2020. I'm just going to throw something in quickly in, just, I was just thinking as we talk about GPS units, one other thing that's been hugely popular in the last week is webinars, isn't it? Um, before we jump onto your FAQs, yeah, yeah. the webinars, <laughs> you, actually, you rang me or emailed me on Tuesday and said, if you're on the hand, I can take some of the customers off you for the webinar. Because on our webinar um, on Tuesday that we did, <laughs> it was on Garmin Basecamp for Windows user, we had record people on it. You know, I think a lot of people have seen that. I've sat at home. Mm -hmm. This is a great opportunity to get to get grips with the software. And the, the, the webinars on the route planning software, whether it's Expedition, I know you've got a GPX <coughs> one coming up on Expedition, or Windows for Windows and, and, and Mac. We've got separate ones there. It's a great opportunity in to get to grips with it, doing these webinars, isn't it? Oh, isn't it just? Yes. Uh, as I say, it, it, it's... Um, it, it's... Um, how can I put it? It just gives people the opportunity, and it's a lot easier from I think from our point of view to explain to people rather than try and put it into words in an email. If it's a, because sometimes people, you know, we do get quite a long question. And it's how you reply to it, and hopefully things don't get lost in translation. And they are a great way to show people um, or to help people who have got, you know, because a lot of people have a good basic understanding of. Uh, base camp or expedition to but it's just helping them again go with that one stage further mm -hmm. I've had questions about you know I've had a few questions about well you know when we're finally allowed back out to go walking I want to be able to do this mm -hmm. and and again so the webinars are a good way of actually showing people um, customers how they do whatever they want to achieve now for and then they've got time to go away practice play with it locally before we're all mm -hmm. you know and what we do in these webinars people don't know you log on it's actually a zoom call zoom's very much in the press at the moment um and we we share our screen with you so we share our screen with you and you see Garmin base camp or using a barn Garmin base camp or expedition you see that on our screen and we work through everything from setting that um, up for the first time the settings you need to do um, how to create direct route turn by turn routing how to download gpx files from the internet and that's the kind of areas that we cover and i'll be honest with you i keep going back at the online resource and the webinar and our physical courses as you imagine ian and i deliver the same thing again and again and again so actually when i deliver a webinar as you do ian it's exactly the same as what we do on a two-day gps training yeah. course isn't well, it, it is it's yes. that's kind of work through because you do it every weekend you go right start a data on our GPS training course, let's set up Garmin Basecamp and let's do this. Yeah. It's exactly the same as what I do on a webinar and you just kind of go into yeah. autopilot, yeah. really. And and they are, they're just, it's just £19.99, yes. you know, it's, it's phenomenally, and I even had a mm -hmm. number of people like you who mm -hmm. had the unit for two or three years. I've kind of got to grips with it, but there's a few little questions I've got. You can log on, there's a chat box there, you can ask questions. Yeah. And I actually quite make, I kind of ask quiz questions and I yeah. do a kind of, as I'm doing direct routes, let me know what the maximum waypoints we have in it and people guess and get these numbers drummed under people. So it's not just, we'll show you, it's mm -hmm. kind of, it's, and the other thing I've said to people on the webinars and, and, um, is you do if you do have a second computer or a second laptop or a tablet play that actually on your tablet or your computer and then follow us step by step on your own computer so you can watch our yeah. screen and have a yeah. second screen and you can follow us so instead of just sitting there for an hour and a half going yeah. I'm overwhelmed by it if you can set up your yes. route planning software as we set ours up it's set up for life and you never need to do it again as well and it's so done so, isn't it yeah it is absolutely done. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and that's there and again <clears> we've started recording it as well so um, well we are going to start recording them I've, I've done one or two so far so actually if you want to if you come on one of our webinars we're hopefully going to upload a copy of that so you can refer to it um for for the end of time but it's just going to be for the people who have actually purchased that webinar rather than going out for public views as well yes so uh, yeah don't forget yeah. to do that ian when you do yours um week after next <laughs> 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 i've got to do Absolutely. mine on tuesday so i'm going to record my next one which i've got a week on tuesday and you've got one a week on wednesday haven't you i have yes um, indeed. so that's uh yeah, yeah so yeah. Uh, so if you are wanting to just go to our website, which is gpstraining.co.uk, click on courses at the top and then the bottom left, on the left hand menu bar, you'll see all webinars and you see the list in date order and you can just book yourself yeah. on or alternatively, just give us a call. It's 0169 
and we can just take that booking over the telephone. Lovely thing is because we're moved now into Zoom, we used to be limited to 12, 14 people, but now um, we're limited to 50 people. So, because we have a commercial license with Zoom, um, so we can get a lot more people on those webinars. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we're not limited as we were in the past, which used to drive me uh, slowly mad. So uh, <laughs> we, we can do that there. So yeah, if you are interested in getting to grips with um, either your unit or route planning, um, and just have a look at our website and we can put you on one of those webinars. The next thing on this month's GPS training podcast is Ian's FAQs, the frequently asked questions he's been asked um, when doing the support role over the past month. Um, Ian, your first FAQ, is it going to be a Garmin one, isn't it, I believe? The Garmin one, that's it. Um, and what it is, is that I've had, I had a couple of people on a course quite recently and then I've had the same question this last week that I think what's happening is that a few people, um, which goes back to our sort of like our webinars really as well in many ways, is that they understand that you can download a GPX file off any old site, uh, that had walking website onto their computer. And what they're doing, it seems, is that then they're then copying and pasting it directly into the Garmin folder, mm -hmm. into the GPX folder. Um, which they can do, but <laughs> as, as, I, as I pleaded with someone the other day, please put it first into Basecamp because you don't know what sort of file it is. If you end up copying and pasting it direct into the GPX folder of your Garmin GPS, then potentially at a later stage or even at that point, you can end up deleting something or moving something that you shouldn't need delete uh, moving and then the unit won't work and then you'll have to send it back to Garmin and they'll charge, understand it quite rightly and understandably they'll charge them for the well, reloading we, of the... We've GPS. actually had a few people who drop a GPX file and then the unit starts crashing because actually the GPX yeah. file is corrupt and then as it boots yeah. up their unit, it crashes and you can go, what yeah. have you done? I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Well, you must have. And then you can, if you can search the internal storage, you find this horrible GPX file. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. um and as you say it's 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 corrupt or whatever reason. Yeah. Actually I don't really know why you would do that because you would want to see what you're gonna do before you go for your walk or your cycle route anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. But I think I think you know, with the people who have been doing this, with gross respect, they probably don't you know, probably um aren't aware that it is a much better thing to do because it's sort of like none of these GPX files are moderated. They, by anyone, they could be the most dangerous, you know, you could be going for the most dangerous walk. Not that you can go far at the moment, mm -hmm. but you know, when you when we are back out, you could end up putting a GPX file in anywhere where, you know, what, North Wales, the Lake District, Scotland, somewhere where there are some very severe um, drops. And if you're not, a very if you're a competent walker but not confident for whatever reason um or you know you could really land yourself in a lot of problems mm -hmm. and i think more than anything is it's it's a safety thing isn't it that you're that you by by not putting them transferring the gpx file from your computer into base camp then you don't know what you're putting into your gps at all and you don't really know and, virtually until you're out there what you're going to be walking mm -hmm. or cycling and and whereas at least by bring it the one stage further from your computer into base camp you can have a look at it you can see that you're happy with it you can change it you can you can look to see how far it is whereas if you're just putting copy and pasting it straight into the gps you're, you're just not going to know anything about it are you? The, the basics you don't even know it's a route or a track you don't even oh, know yeah. what navigation experience oh, no. you get when you're oh, no. walking oh, it's no. not beeping at me well it, well yeah. it's often nothing That's... i'll put this gps file i can't find it well is yeah. it a route or track i don't know yeah. Well, yeah. it's uh, yeah. so I totally agree. Is we cover this in the webinars and on the course. You no, know, import that GPX file into Garmin Basecamp. As you rightly say, you can edit it. The start and finish might be like a, a closed route. You might want to yeah. ed delete some of the last waypoints. Yeah. You might want to edit it a little bit, or you might look at, oh, that's not for me because we're going to the top of wherever, which is too high, and and just yeah, just edit it. And you can convert it into a route, or you can convert yeah. it into a track, and you've got so much flexibility. 
and yeah, it's like, like saying, it's like somebody giving you a guidebook and saying, go for this walk, it's on page 62, and you're not going to open the guidebook before you get yeah. there, isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 oh, yeah. it's, yeah. it's the same thing, you're going to go, well, you've got to go to this car park, open the guidebook, page 62, and follow, well, can you not look at it before? No, you can't look at it no. beforehand. Just, just the, go there. It's important yeah. to go on a base camp or expedition to your satellite yeah. user. Yeah. Um, and, is the way you can do it, isn't it? And of course, if it is going into a Garmin GPS, it can't, if it's a route that you, you GPX route, with more than 250 waypoints, it's not going to work anyway. It's not going to work, is it? So, mm -hmm. so you need to be looking at it first to, to before you put it into your GPS, basically. There's some very good videos in the online resource, Ian, about importing GPS. Yes, there are, aren't there? Right? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and I keep on saying to you, John, I've started putting, uh, I've actually got some, done the long, some long distance route walks for Wales and Scotland now. Very good. And yeah, yeah, so there's some for People Wales don't know what we're talking about because we've been in in-house conversation. We've got yeah. a GPX library in the online resource and uh, Ian's been populating this. With, uh, we've done all the national trails so far, then we're doing yeah. long distance trails for England, Scotland and Wales. This is what we're talking about. Uh, at the top of that in the online resource, there's some videos that I've done at the top. That's why I said they're very good, which is how you download those GPX files from our online resource, import them into Garmin Basecamp, um, for the, the Garmin users and then how we can then cut them down day by day edit them how we can edit them to make them personal to our our walk mm. because if you're downloading a, a long distance trail which is a you know a 200 mile trail um, you're not going to put that whole trail into your unit because it's going to say you're, you know, Ian you're walking the speed you need at the end in six days time totally useless information but if we chop yeah. it day by day well, edit yeah. that up and in the online resources videos taking you through how you do that and then the idea is once you cut into day by day, you can extend it even to your accommodation. It says, right, Ian, you're walking this speed. You're going to get the end of your day's walking up 4.15 this afternoon. Mm, mm. Or you're going to get there at 8 o'clock tonight. Right, I need to keep myself going because actually we're, we're running behind schedule. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, online yeah, resources, yeah. if you go to the course at the top, then GPX library, I think there's the videos at the top, and then underneath is all the GPX files that you can download. Mm. Okay, so... Um, key thing there is with um, Garmin users and uh, potentially SatMap users is um, don't bring your GPX files through Garmin Basecamp or Expedition 2 and don't just drop them on the internal memory. Otherwise, you yeah. don't see what it Have is. a look. Have a look That's first. It's your Garmin yeah. top tip as well. Yeah. SatMap top tip. Um, yeah. What is the advantage of buying premium Expedition 2 planner over the free one to see sat map have got some very good deals at the moment um for yes. the upgrade of the uh, expedition to the premium version yes um yeah so i've had one or two people sort of ask me well you know it's i mean i must say and i'm probably <laughs> without wishing to be <laughs> quoting the exact price it the price of expedition two it, it seems quite variable um from with the greatest respect to sat map and and, and i think sat map seems to do seems quite variable <laughs> Um, we we're not allowed to politically say that, are we really? <laughs> well, no, but then, I mean, I mean, because I looked at the website the other day and I think Expedition 2 was 30, because when I had this query, I looked at it and I thought, oh, it's gone up to 30, because it was, I mean, it was £20 for a very long time, then it went up to £25 and then it was 30 now it's crept up to 35 but then you can get it says you can get a discount on all map products and I don't know whether, to be honest with you, I've got no idea if that... Um, covers the expedition to sub subscription or, or not but anyway i hope you're not implying ian that sam up occasionally do have a sale every so often do yes <laughs> yes i am um i am indeed 12 months of the year yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> i know they have a week break before each sale, so when i talk to anyone about expedition two it's sort of like well the price there is a price range of of how much uh their premium subscription is for the year that said um, I think it, it is worth every penny of it, absolutely mm -hmm. every penny of it. The free uh, Expedition 2, all it gives you is a very basic sort of like open street map, basically. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. And um, you can see the list when you go into the free version. You can see the list of all the greyed out uh, maps that you get if you go to the premium version. And for, you know, 30, even if it is £35 at the moment, John, it's it's peanuts isn't yeah. it absolute peanuts and the resource in there for the whole of europe and this is where i think satmap do so well with their mapping um either on the cards or through expedition two it, it's it's just brilliant because you've got all the big european countries mm -hmm. on expedition two with the proper 
country's mapping system mm -hmm. and it's there all for 35 pounds a year and i think that is that's fantastic and you know i've got people saying well why should i pay 35 pounds you know yes the units are expensive but 35 pounds it really is mm -hmm. even, even if it is that price is it's really not a lot and the the um uh before before christmas i i met a lady up in uh in london for a day's one-to-one -one training on her with her active 20 and they have a house uh, or an apartment out in austria somewhere mm -hmm. and they're very keen walkers and with the moment she uh so i got her set up when we did all the expedition two got her set up on expedition two she she paid i explained to her the difference so she paid for the yearly subscription and suddenly because austria is one of the countries that uh is on expedition two it opened up for her this lady you know all the decent austrian mapping mm -hmm. walking mm -hmm. mapping and it was brilliant and for 35 quid a year mm -hmm. yeah, it, 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 and it and it is good so <laughs> that's it and i mean you, you the functionality is very much the same as to how you but you're so limited in what you can well i'll say as in you can plan routes but you can't you know you're planning routes off an open street map which is not very mm -hmm good it's very basic bit of mapping and i think that just as you say it's, it's less than three pounds a month isn't it really yeah. so it's less than yeah. three pounds a month you're going to get because you get one twenty five thousand this country yeah. one's fifty thousand yeah. yeah so yeah. as we already know the one twenty five thousand more accurate we've got our field boundaries you can get a, you, when you're planning your route you're going to get a lot more detail in yeah. there aren't you yeah well. yeah Absolutely. so again for that amount of money when you compare it to in the Garmin world, you no, know, if you want one twenty-five thousand mapping to plan on three hundred forty-nine pound ninety-nine yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah. So actually, when we're talking like less than three pounds a month for sat map, and then you can plan on that more accurate mapping. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Why wouldn't you have it really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think one thing just just for um, just for everyone's in, information, John. Um, I know the big the big game changer for sat map with Expedition Two was that it it works with any internet browser. Whereas Expedition One just slowly sort of like ground itself to halt because of internet browsers. Um, but when it comes to printing the maps um, for a long, although I, you know, probably may have changed in the last few months, I don't know. But I got I, I contacted Satmap because I used to use Firefox as my internet browser, mm -hmm. and I couldn't, for the love and the money, print uh, map print a map create a pdf or anything of of from expedition 2 although it's meant to work i mean it does work on all the browsers and um i think everyone says that google chrome not that we're promoting google chrome but i think but google chrome does just work for mm -hmm. printing um a map because basically what it is one of the functions of expedition 2 is you can print you can look at your screen and you can either create a screenshot of a map that you're looking at yeah. or you can actually um, produce a, a PDF um, file of the map where mm -hmm. you're going to be walking or whatever and Google Chrome does just seem to work all the yeah. time. Um, we found out with a lot of other things as well. Google Chrome, I'm sat here in front of a Mac. Well, actually, a lot of things don't work on Safari where you need to download Google Chrome as a browser. Mm -hmm. And I, I prefer Safari as a browser, don't get me wrong, but Google Chrome seems to work a lot better. You can't do a lot of things without um, with, without um, Google Chrome. So yeah. it's it's not, it's, so it's quite a nice little, an, another top tip really built into a, a top tip battle yeah. in there, which is, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, potentially um, use Google Chrome than, than any other browser, and that works very well with the Expedition 2, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And as I say, it, it is the reason, it, it is just a good, um, you know, just buy for £35 mm -hmm. Expedition 2, the, the premium version. It's brilliant. It was really good. And you've got a webinar on the 29th of April, haven't you? I have, John. All about GPS yes. files importing into yep. um, Expedition 2. Yep. So we'll give everyone just a quick whistle-stop tour of Expedition 2, make sure that they're all happy with um, sort of like using and planning Expedition 2 anyway, and then we can move on to downloading files into um, Expedition 2 from websites.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I must also say as well, if you do buy a um, sat my back to 24 ourselves, you do get a, a number of months free of the premium versions. So again, in with the paperwork that we send out with any GPS unit, we tell you how you can get a number of months free. So um, you can try the premium version of Expedition 2 um, when you buy your SatMap back to 20 from ourselves. And I must also say as well is, is we kind of joked a little bit about our SatMap always having deals. We actually do match their deals. So if you do see a, a, um, a deal on SatMap, get in touch with ourselves. We actually will be the same price as what they are. And we offer the free online training, technical support and, and, and all the uh, extra unique uh, selling that we offer there. So if you are interested in a SatMap back to 20, please do get in touch. Don't forget, we have lots of top tips and solutions to all your questions in the GPS Training online resource. Just go to our website, which is gpstraining.co.uk, click on online resource in the top menu bar, and then log in. Select the unit we're looking for top tips for, and you'll see those are down at the bottom. And finally, many thanks for listening to this month's GPS Training Podcast. If there's anything else you would like to cover in future podcasts, please do get in touch. Please do give us a call, especially if you're thinking about buying a new GPS unit. Please do take a look at our physical GPS training courses, which we're hoping to get back on with in June uh, 2020, or our webinars. Just please go to our website, which is gpstraining.co.uk, and click on Courses. Please do tell a friend about the GPS Training Podcast and encourage them to subscribe on whatever platform they are listening to. And don't forget to give us a five-star rating on iTunes or Google Google Podcasts or uh, Android users in whatever um, podcast um, listener you listen to. And if you do get the option, please do leave us a snazzy review on whatever platform you listen to as it really helps our rating. Many thanks, Ian, for joining me on this month's GPS Train Punk, or our second one of April 2020. And uh, yeah, and, and we've got to say, we've got lots of um, webinars coming up, Ian. Over we have. Month, haven't we? Yes. So before yes. our next podcast, I think we've actually got, uh, uh, yeah, plenty of, I think we've got three uh, webinars coming up. Lots to do. Um, lots to do, So John. hopefully you can join myself or Ian on one of those webinars. And uh, yeah, and, and I think wholeheartedly, we've, um, we mean this wholeheartedly from everybody here at GPS. Please stay safe. Yeah. Um, please um, do what you should be doing and, and nothing else. And because uh, we want to see you all here in two weeks' time and four weeks' time and six weeks' yes. time, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you very much, Ian, for joining me. You're and welcome, um, we're actually recording this podcast as well. So if you log on to our website, you're going to see Ian and I recording it. You see our ugly mugs. At, now it's. Um, <laughs> Seven minutes to nine in the morning. See my pack. Um, see, see what's behind me as well. <laughs> <laughs> you see me swilling my coffee down to get me going. Yes. In the morning. So, yeah, thank you so much, Ian, for joining me. And keep well and stay safe. And uh, yeah, cheers. Yeah, guys. Brilliant. Thank okay, thank you, John.